Hello friends, welcome to Creator King, Grandmother's Cookies. They're so good. When I was little, I used to eat a whole box myself. You can probably imagine how chubby I was back then. For today's invention, we'll just need the metal box. So clean it well and let's get to work. Don't forget to use alcohol to remove that horrible label that all packaged products come with. You can use a tool like this to scrape off the label. I hope you have more patience than me because it will take you a long time to remove it. A popsicle stick can also be useful. Find an old DVD that you no longer use and place it on the base of the cookie box. Then, with any marker, trace both the outer circumference as well as the inner circumference. With the same marker, mark the outline of the base. While we're at it, let's continue with a can of Pringles, but this time a small one, because I'm on a diet. Place the lid in the center of the base and trace its circumference too. Once all these circles are made, draw the sections of our future target with a red pen and a ruler. Now, fill in the shapes with the colors of a kilt. Mine's a little crooked in the center, but it works. Have you ever seen this kind of tape? It's like what they use at crime scenes or in the show Law and Order. Wrap the side of the cookie box with the tape so that no one comes close to it. Find a syringe that you can take out of some cough syrup and remove the support part. We'll perform a little surgery on it with the straw to remove this circle. Very good, but the other end will also need some surgery to get rid of the nozzle. Dust off those notebooks you've kept in storage since coronavirus began and we'll finally put them to use. Mark a straight line on the plastic cover of the notebook with the help of a marker and ruler. Then cut the piece out with the best scissors you have. With the same scissors, cut four small elongated triangles using the first one as reference. Don't think we've forgotten our super glue. We would be nothing without it. Glue the plastic triangles we cut a few moments ago to the part you see on the screen. Our dart is almost ready, but the tip is still missing. Or in this case, the magnets. For the safety of anyone who might cross our path. Cut one more piece of police tape and wrap it around the dart. Simply because it will make it look cooler. Don't forget to make several of them. I'd be too lazy to get the dart every time I threw it. You probably already understood the logic of the magnet on the dart and the metal target, but just in case you skipped elementary school, here's how it works. One of the biggest advantages of this invention is that you can store the darts either inside the box or on top of it. And here I am, Creator King, testing my creation. In case anyone was wondering how the genius behind these inventions look, they were great shots. All this reminds me of when my brother and I were given darts as gifts many years ago. Only those darts were sharp. The following invention is a short but very useful one for the gamers of our audience. I'm sure you'll love it. After cutting off the sharp edge of the lid, proceed to fill this slot with hot glue. Kindly ask your mom to lend you some of her precious aluminum foil and cut a small square which we will put on top of the lid. After securing it to the lid with more hot glue, cut off the excess with scissors. Now, with the box cutter, remove the center part of the aluminum. Once this piece is ready, place hot glue in the center of the lid. Go to the pharmacy and buy a syringe like this one. And focus on this little black plastic piece since it will be the only part we'll need. Do you already know what the invention will be? Leave it in the comments. Glue the plastic piece to the cap and secure it tightly with a lot of hot glue. Then cut off the part you see in the video with the saw. And add even more hot glue to attach it to the cap for cell phone games. And that's it! I told you it'd be short. All you have to do is put it on your phone and open the game. Ready? You're able to beat Lightning McQueen in the Piston Cup. Ka-chow! I've only found these huge clothespins in gift shops. I think they're used to hold giant cards to giant stuffed animals or enormous bouquets of flowers. After separating the two parts of the pen, find a tool with which you can remove the metal circle from the back of one of these pieces and put them together as shown on the screen. 
With a pencil, mark a vertical line at the top of the groove, and another diagonal line using the semicircle-shaped hole as a reference. Then cut it with the saw. Disassemble another big clothespin and join the narrower ends like this. Then, with a pencil, mark a line through both pieces. Take the lid off of your super glue because it's time to start joining pieces like Cupid joins hearts. Once glued, cut the new piece along the marked line to obtain a wooden triangle. Separate one half of the last giant clothespin and with a tool you have on hand, sand any imperfections. And then cut off the narrow end with a saw to obtain another triangle. Bring all the pieces to join them together. We'll need the other half of the last pin. This shape reminds me of those that appear in futuristic video games, the ones that fire laser beams. Generously apply super glue to each piece and glue them to the biggest center piece that will function as the base of our rotating fireworks launcher. Since they asked so kindly, we'll recycle these two lids for our invention. Make a hole in the central part of both of them with a sharp tool, through which we'll insert a wooden stick. You may have to apply a little pressure to get it in securely. And to make sure it doesn't move, put glue on the back of the lids, then proceed to saw the stick. We'll need eight of these for each lid. Let's call them handles because honestly, I have the memory of a goldfish and I don't remember their name. If anyone knows the name, remind me in the comments. They must be screwed into the lids from the sides, ensuring that they are spaced evenly from each other. Find a normal size clothespin and attach it to the shorter side of the wooden stick. Then put some glue on it and stick it to the structure of our firework launcher. Put another triangular piece of wood on top of the hook we just attached to secure the extension. Next, let's add the hottest piece to our final invention. Apply instant glue to the base of the lighter and glue it to the launcher leg. Now, reattach one of the mega clothespins to the body of the structure. It's time for the pyrotechnics. Look for one with a long fuse. I recommend these ones called Silvador, as they meet the characteristics and attract attention. If the stick that comes out of the fireworks is too long, cut them so that they are similar to the one you see on screen. Look for some rope, if it has a design even better, you know, for aesthetics. Cut a piece and glue one end to the swivel stick. Load our eight Silvadoras. You know, when I was a kid, I loved to watch the fireworks that were launched by the hotels and casinos where I lived. I would think about how the device that launched them worked, or how high they would go before bursting into those beautiful colors. What good times! After this nostalgic moment, it's time to feast our eyes on our impressive invention. They look so beautiful! Although I almost became part of the show because of one that misfired. Almost. Almost. I recommend that you wear your protective firefighter suit that you should all have to avoid any accidents. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No! It's Creator King doing a demonstration! I made that up without thinking. These have been today's inventions. Take a look at my channel if you want to learn how to make more amazing and simple inventions. In addition, here are two videos about more awesome inventions. Here you can subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos. Thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. Until next time.